Hello. We're going to talk about, I got to stop doing that. Hello. Thing. I don't like the way that sounds. I'll work on it. Uh, for this particular topic, uh, you're going to be doing a lot of pausing of the video and thinking about how some of the things that are going on. So uh, correlation versus causation. So you can see if you have a tiny little graph like this and you have all these dots, you know, how do you decide if you can draw a line through all of that? I mean, computers in Excel can try to calculate that for you, or you can try to draw a line of best fit. But when you're collecting hundreds of data points, you know, is there really a connection between them? Well, that's one thing you can try to figure out. But one of the main things we're looking at here is correlation versus causation, and if they are the same thing or if they mean something um, totally different. So, um, so. Uh, take a look at this first question right here. Uh, what does increasing temperatures cause? And pause the video and try to come up with five things right now. Okay, did you think of some things? Did you actually pause? If you didn't pause, then shame on you. Uh, increasing temperatures, you could, you could say it makes people sweat more. It uh, makes people more red in the face. It makes them lose more weight. I don't know. But those are based on things that you already know, what, the, what increasing temperatures actually cause. Um, now, those are things, you, the, the things that you just mentioned, you mentioned them because you see, you understand that there's a reason behind it. Obviously, increasing temperatures raises body temperature, our body needs, needs to lose heat, homeostasis mechanisms, a bunch of things like that. Um, but what if it's something, an experiment, where you don't know the necessary uh, information to show the direct relationship? In other words, what's called causation. Does one thing actually cause the other thing to happen? So sometimes you can just have things that are correlated. Correlated means they may show evidence of some kind of link as one thing increases the other thing increases as one thing increases the other thing decreases but is there necessarily a cause is there necessarily is one of them actually causing the other and that we're going to look at a few silly examples so take a look at this next sentence here explain what the following phrase means using examples you've written above uh, so go ahead read that and try to explain it as best you can using the words that we just described. Pause. Okay, I'm paused. All right, now moving on. So we have here are three uh, interesting examples for you to take a look at here. Um, sleeping with one's shoes on is strongly correlated with waking up with a headache. Therefore, sleeping with one's shoes on causes headaches. So that seems kind of silly, but could there be another, although these two variables, sleeping with one's shoes on and waking up with a headache, although they're strongly correlated, so if you had to draw a graph, you know, maybe you get, you get a positive relationship like this, but just because you see a nice, strong, positive relationship, does it necessarily mean that this is directly causing this? Is there another explanation? Think about it. Pause and think about it. Did you do that? All right. If you did, then maybe you would have said something like coming home late. Maybe coming home late after drinking too much Coca-Cola or something like that might. No, wait. Coca-Cola has a lot of caffeine. Sleepy substances. I don't know. I can't think of anything. But anyways, if they were to come back home and they'd be really tired and exhausted, they just happen to fall asleep with their shoes on waking up with a headache. So there could be something else that's linking those two. Okay, next one. Ice cream sales are correlated with the number of people who drown at sea. So does that mean the more people who drown at sea, uh, ice cream sales are going to go up? Well, if you were to draw a line, whoops, this is, a, okay, these are the dots. If you were to draw a line and connect these two, maybe there would be a strong correlation, but it doesn't necessarily mean that one is causing the other. Try to come up with an example now. Pause. All right, so what'd you come up with? Maybe because what could be linking these two? Mm, that it's summertime. If it's summertime, people tend to eat more ice cream. At least I do. Yum, yum. Or summertime, and summertime, uh, during summertime, people, more people go swimming at the beach. The more people who go swimming at the beach, the more likely you might have some people who drown. Um, that's probably one of the worst ways to die, by the way. So anyways, we saw a correlation, but 
not necessarily causation. Now we're using really silly examples here, but if you're collecting data for an experiment, you have to be careful that even though you find uh, statistical evidence, mathematical evidence that they, these two particular uh, sets are significantly different, statistically speaking, it doesn't tell you the actual cause or the actual reason, the explanation, the biological reasons behind it. So be careful not to jump to conclusions if you, if you show a positive relationship between uh, how temperature affects heart rate. Depending on the design of your experiment, it may not be directly, it may not actually be the temperature that is directly causing that increase in, in heart rate. There could be some other factors, so think about that. And last one here is... Since the 1950s, both the atmospheric carbon dioxide level and crime levels have increased sharply. Therefore, atmospheric carbon dioxide causes crime. Okay? A lot of things have increased since the 1950s. It could just be uh, increase in technology has led to better... What are we talking about? Better... Oh, what am I trying to link here? Increase in technology... Uh, maybe more people want to steal some TVs, and to produce those TVs, more factories are around, and so you are putting more carbon dioxide after the Industrial Revolution, greater levels of carbon dioxide in. Um, so that's one thing. You've heard about the greenhouse effect. Increases in carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere and increasing global temperatures, and people have had to try to show experimentally that these two things are not just correlated, uh, but one is actually causing the other, that increased amounts of carbon dioxide in air is actually causing uh, increases in global temperatures. And finally, funny little story here. I'm not going to read it to you, but go ahead, take a look at this. It's pretty funny. <laughs> okay, 